Hello everyone and welcome to this video, which is in our Great Engine Game series and our Crazy Leela series. I'm Grandmaster Matthew Sadler and we are continuing our look at Leela playing at odds. This time, Rook Odds, and um, it's a continuation of the series that was played against, um, yeah, 2750, 2800 uh, Bullet Player um, and Blitz Player as well. And uh, it was played at Blitz uh, three minutes plus uh, two seconds. So, um, I mean, not a, not a, a super comfortable uh, um, uh, time control for a, for a human player, but still. A rook up somehow. But look how um, Leela plays this. I was really impressed with it because uh, somehow, despite being a rook down, Leela just does a positional squeeze and then eventually Black's position just uh, just cracks and, um, and uh, is broken open. But it was really, really impressive. So let's have a look. Started with e4 and then the center counter. <laughs> e takes d5, queen d5, knight c3, queen a5, d4, c6. And then Leela plays the move h3. Um, not a, um, a main line um, uh, in normal chess, but actually very, very sensible. Uh, kind of inspired me actually to, um, to, to, to play similar plans in, um, in Blitz. Uh, the idea simply is to stop a, a bishop from coming to g4. That often happens if you play the knight to f3. Um, and also allow white to expand uh, on the king side and gain space. Um, you know, Black's bishop often comes to f5, so g4 is quite useful. And, um, you know, the idea is that, uh, you know, Leela is really, when it's uh, giving odds, it's doing a lot with its pawns. And um, it's really, you know, trying to gain space and, um, and uh, well, you know, create uh, an advantage in that way, really. You know, use the, uh, the extra time that not having a piece to develop uh, gives it in order to gain space. And you're going to see that very much throughout the game. So um, knight f6, bishop d2, just um, uh, breaking the pin and, um, yeah, you know, setting up vaguely vague ideas of uh, discovered attacks later on. Black plays bishop f5 and now g4. That's what we expect, Get, trying to gain some space. Now, yeah, black could have played the bishop to g6, um, but uh, black decided to play the bishop to e6. That is that sort of thing is known. Uh, you know, just uh, the idea is that the bishop can come to d5 and actually be attacking something. So um, quite a quite a known idea somehow. Um, yeah, g6 looks maybe a little more comfortable, but uh, this is perfectly uh, possible. So bishop d3 from um, from white. And uh, notice that Leela's not worrying at all about moves like queen b6, which would hit two pawns and most likely win one of them. Um, yeah, Leela doesn't really worry about giving away extra material when it's giving odds. Um, you see, with queen odds games, that Leela's often giving up a couple of pawns in the opening. It's incredible somehow. Um, I think just to, you know open lines and uh, and create play and um yeah also with um with uh, knight odds very frequently giving away um uh, a pawn you know like a g4 just giving away the uh, d4 knight f6 g4 you know with knight odds just uh, giving away a pawn and just um uh, you know creating play so um yeah leela again not worried about that but black played um, you know quite uh, calmly g6 looking for a solidity there Knight g7, bishop g7, knight g2, bishop g7, and now f4. And uh, yeah, you know, Leela's just uh, looking for uh, for space here. And uh, I guess Black got a little bit cold feet, um, you know, thinking, oh, castling kingside, don't want to uh, to run into a pawn storm. So Black played the move um, h5 here. Um, you know, looking to uh, uh, to break open the pawn front. Um, but Leela here played the move uh, f5. And um, that's, uh, you know, tactically quite, um, uh, quite decent. The idea is that uh, G takes F5, G takes F5, black played that. And then uh, Bishop takes F5 is going to be met by, just give you a little uh, moment to, uh, to see it, uh, B4. When black can't defend the, uh, the bishop. Uh, the interesting thing about this is that, um, I mean, obviously you're, you're falling into a trap if you do this, but uh, the engine gave an interesting follow-up here, which was to play bishop h6. And uh, they didn't think really that black's 
you know, they still thought the black was plus 3.8 or something like that, you know. And, uh, well, in some ways, you know, falling into this trap is not so bad because um, uh, you've broken white's uh, pawn chain. You're going to swap off um, the dark squared bishops, which leaves white with a light squared bishop, which, you know, in this sort of um, um, structure, especially when black plays e6, it's sort of uh, um, um, center counter, scavening and um, um, uh, Karakhan structure. It's not really, um, um, yeah, it's it's not great that light squared bishop. You know, it does tend to get restricted by the pawns and not have that much to do. So it wouldn't be so bad for black to do that. You know, sometimes falling into a trap is uh, better. Uh, the engines want, want black to play bishop d5, which, to be honest, is, is pretty logical. Um, but um, what black played was bishop c8, which, uh, you know, black's playing quite cautiously, but um, it's actually going to end up, you're going to see, it's going to end up being a bit problematic in terms of, you know, what black can actually uh, do in the end with uh, with his pieces. Queen c1 from black is, from white, is really cunning. I don't know whether you can, uh, whether you uh, probably you understand now what the point is of queen c1. Um, white's actually stopping black from playing bishop h6. So stopping the bishop from getting exchanged, stopping pieces from getting exchanged and keeping black bottled in. It's a really nice move kind of key this uh, this move to to white strategy so black tries to develop with um knight bd7 rook g1 just uh, hitting that bishop just an unpleasant little idea bishop f8 the bishop retreats and now a4 you know and uh, it's one of those things about you know about the way that leela plays um uh, odds chess that um you know it's um uh, it's this real really impressive mixture of you know some lightning attacks some incredible tactics and then just some positional moves to squeeze but it's the whole idea and right? just gaining space squeezing black on the board just because uh you know you've got a rook less doesn't mean you can't play positionally either and of course you know black with an extra rook has more pieces in his limited amount of space so uh you know more chance to get cramped um the point is of course is that you know you're playing against very strong players um you know and uh at this time control as well you know uh, particularly strong at that and um uh yeah you know you're just keeping them under control so beautifully it's it's really really impressive so black played queen c7 leela played bishop f4 and the queen went back to d8 and then queen e3 the interesting thing is that, you know, from a human point of view, you're thinking, wow, you know, why it's making so much progress. But for the engines, you know, they're still saying minus four, minus four point five. And um, yeah, I mean, that's why the, uh, you know, the stockfish and the torch evaluations are not really that useful. I mean, they are very interesting and it's very important to know when the actual decisive mistake happened. But in terms of how a human is feeling whilst this is happening uh, to him, um, it's very, very different to the evaluation. And um you know, I'm not saying that Leela is factoring that into uh, the equation. I don't think that leela has got uh, understanding of human psychology. But clearly, you know, the training um, that uh, that Leela gets in terms of what is unpleasant for uh, for human players, what the human players experience as unpleasant or high risk, you know, is is really leading to these sort of situations. So um, Bish B5 from uh, from Leela. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's one of those things there that um, you can't keep total control over black. So you're giving black the opportunity to play uh, Bish B6 at some stage. But it's kind of hitting air. And um, and also, of course, it's not exchanging off a piece because we've moved the bishop to E5. So that's not too bad. Um, black chose to play Rook H6 in this position. I mean, you understand getting out of the pin. It's not um, it's not a bad move. Uh, the engines don't think it's, uh, you know, particularly bad. But um, but it does feel a little bit. Yeah, it feels like the start of miscoordination, right? Because, um, you know, G8 is now um, um, available for the rook. So you can't actually challenge the rook on G8 anymore. Obviously, you're taking um, um, a square away from the dark squared bishop and the dark squared bishop has to cover you. Um, and you're also uh, attackable by bishop f4 at some stage. So, you know, yeah, I don't know. It feels starting to get nervous now. I'm really starting to get nervous if 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 those are the sort of moves that I'm making in the position. You know, it's because uh, this sort of play with black is much more suited to an engine than to a human player. So queen f3, just uh, getting out of the way of a future knight coming to d5. Knight takes d5. Knight takes d5 from Lila. Surprised me slightly, but... Uh, 
Yeah, because queen takes d5 happens and, uh, you know, you've moved your queen to f3. So now, you know, you're going to lose a tempo. But OK, Leela just plays queen e3. And, you know, the, the nice point about that is that, um, you know, OK, black's exchanged off a piece, but it was one of his active developed ones. And there's uh, plenty that aren't and plenty that are just rubbish. And um, uh, yeah, you know, Leela's uh, just thinking, well, I mean, um, what have I lost? I'm fully mobilized here. So I'm not it's not a question of losing Tempi anymore. And what Leela's eyeing is to play the move C4 now to um, to stop anything coming to D5, taking away more space. Bishop D7, King F2 from uh, from white. Um, yeah, I mean, Leela's planning to start moving these pawns forward. So doesn't want the king on the queen side, wants the king on the uh on king's side and actually that's yeah it's one of the differences that you see with uh torch and stockfish for a while that uh you know they were looking just to get their king safe but leela's yeah you know much more ambitious here it's not about uh keeping safe it's about what what's going to give chances to uh to attack so queen a5 played from black and then c4 um taking control of d5 and not caring at all about the pawn on a4 and the engines say yeah you can take this one right you know you can take it and uh and that's fine but yeah, Leela's not worrying about that. Um, it's going to be that's going to be open lines. So, you know, that's just extra chances. Uh, but the key thing is what Leela wants to do is to restrict the opponent's pieces. Um, and yeah, you know, of course, you know, this sort of play, Leela can't uh, can't play, uh, you know, a knight down against any uh, decent engine somehow. You know, the engines are, are, are too, uh, too tactically, you know, uh, are strong for uh, for that. But yeah, you, you do notice that um, you know that uh, at some stage the risks that um, that a human opponent would have to take, or the precision of calculation that would be needed at some stages, is you know really would be would be very impressive if a human could uh, could do that somehow. And um, and yeah, humans can do uh, an awful lot, and sometimes you know find brilliant ideas just on the basis of intuition. But uh, yeah. You know, it's uh, it's often more than just one brilliant move. It's, uh, you know, it's going to need uh, several and um, it's not that easy. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just thinking uh, now I was playing some light chess blitz and uh, one of my opponents uh, has just uh, I got uh, points back because somebody was uh, was cheating. Uh, I have to say, I, I'm not too surprised. He um, absolutely destroyed me with uh, taking uh, 12 seconds on his clock in a bullet game. So <laughs> it wasn't wasn't too surprising. Um, so h4 played by black and uh, black's looking to um, either play rook h5 and then bishop h6 after or looking to play maybe knight h5 to g3. It's a decent idea. b3 from white, keeping it nice and uh, nice and calm. And uh, now black can't resist playing the move castles. And that's quite funny, really, because, uh, you know, for a human player, it's quite a quite a strain you know keeping the king in the center like that but the engines are not at all keen they think yeah this king is way way more exposed than uh than the uh than the um uh than on in the center and that's kind of right although obviously it's it's not easy to uh to develop somehow you know uh um when um when, when your king is in the center i mean the engines don't want to either the engines want to play king d8 um, or they want to, you know, start trying to hunt pawns with queen b4. But um, but basically, I mean, they're thinking of playing the king to d8 and keeping the rook, you know, there to defend squares like b8 and c8. You know, in principle, that's not bad. I mean, the ones that uh, the squares that could be vulnerable um, are kind of uh, c7 and b8. And, uh, you know, a rook to cover it is better. When the rook's on d8, it can't assist at all in defending uh, the king's side. But it's still it's still um, minus three point five four for uh, for black, so it's quite good. But now there's just a crucial moment. Uh, there's an absolutely crucial moment. It's either black stays winning or black is completely and utterly uh, lost. And um, you know that's what you're seeing in these games uh, of Leela's an awful lot. And you know that's why the programming is just so amazing. Um, because, uh, yeah, these are not situations that humans deal with well, you know, especially uh, with fast time controls, but, you know, even with uh, slower time controls. Um, because here Black's got to um, got to take decisive action. And that decisive action is the move um, E5. Um, why E5? Well, if you go Bishop takes H6, we've got this move uh, E4. And I mean, basically, you're just breaking um, 
uh, breaking this whole attacking white barrier. You're giving material back, but you're just ensuring that white cannot get at your king. Um, so um, something like bishop c2, we go queen takes f5 check, king to e1, bishop b4 check, king d1, queen f3. And uh, the engines consider that black's got a considerable advantage here. I mean, you're uh, a pawn up. And, um, you know, there's a weak pawn on uh, h3 and, you know, the, the white king's a little bit awkward. But, yeah, you know, that's a pretty far, um, a, a pretty far, far cry from being um, from being a whole uh, a whole rook up starting the game. Right. You know, and uh, for the engines, they sort of say, you know, like Torch and Stockfish, they sort of say, yeah, you know, e5, obviously e5. Yeah, you know, for a human player, this is quite complicated tactics, plus the uh, uh, the evaluation of what's the resulting position like. And uh, and on top of that, the slight feeling of humiliation that you're having to uh, to go, f you know, for a position, a pawn up rather than, um, you know, rather after starting uh, a rook up, you know, with white having zero compensation. I mean, it's uh, it's quite tricky. But the point is, after rook h5, there's this move b4, gaining space. And uh, yeah, after queen takes b4, more or less forced, we've got queen e5. And there we are. You know, the, the black king indeed turns out not to be safe on the queen side because the rook's no longer on a8. So b8 is no longer covered. And there's also threat of mate as well on b8, threat of mate on c7. And the really sad thing here is that after queen d6, which you think blocks, white's got the move queen a5. Bishop attacking the queen, queen attacking the c7 square, and there's nothing you can do, right? Because uh, the queen, if the queen moves away, then we've got queen c7 checkmate. So yeah, black's just going to lose the uh, queen back, and of course, you know it's not just losing the queen back. Um, white's got going to have a raging attack since <laughs> black's very helpfully now opened the b file. You know it's just going to be really tough for black to defend this queen side. And I mean, also the black pieces are not particularly well placed. Leela's managed to um, uh, to uh, keep the black position completely under wraps. Now, when something goes wrong, yeah, black's got no space either. So black played a6, takes, takes, and knight f4, and black resigned in this position. Um, I mean, um, you could play on for a little bit, but I mean, uh, white's going to go rook b1, queen b6, c5, bishop a6, and it's just going to be completely winning. I mean, I think uh, human players who've played quite a few games against Lila are tending to resign <coughs> fairly quickly. You know, they uh, they don't have much uh, much hope of um, of dealing with this sort of position with then not much time left. And uh, and you know, obviously Lila's playing at 3600 strength, right? So uh, yeah, they don't particularly feel that their chances are very good. And yeah, well, practice tends to uh, to bear that out somehow. But I thought that was a, a really impressive game. I mean, first of all, you know, just being rook odds, giving rook odds against, um, you know, a, a 2800 um, uh, player at this level. It's my strength, right? Uh, you know, and um, OK, I'm not uh, <coughs> um, in terms of my ELO rating, uh, you know, 26, was it in 2694? Um, yeah, probably 2800 on Lee Chess for, for Bullet and Blitz is um, is maybe a little bit lower than you'd expect. Probably I think 2900 would be uh, better. But yeah, you know, that's it's a decent Blitz le blitz and Bullet level. And just, you know, with giving Rook odds somehow, you know, Leela's just controlled the whole game. You know, Black's never got free and White's just, you know, very calmly and very slowly just um, uh, just increased the pressure. But, you know, what's very striking then as well is that when the, um, uh, you know, the disaster happens in the end, it happens kind of in one move, you know, and uh, and that's, you know, the value of what Leela's doing, which is just, you know, putting risk into the position, putting danger into the position, because uh, when things go wrong, you know, they really, really go wrong. So there we are. I hope you enjoyed that one. That was a, a third uh, Rook Odds game. Um I've got some uh, some uh, a black game uh, coming up, and I'm going to try and find uh, some more some very interesting black games. Actually, I I posted one on uh, Mastodon and Twitter, just uh, a uh, a tactic from one of them, um, which is you know really really interesting. Uh, Lila playing all sorts of modern hippo openings as uh, as as uh, black very often, so very very interesting. 
And um, uh, yeah, I've also got um, uh, a Queen Odds game uh, coming along. Uh, just so you can have a look how uh, this new network that they've released for Queen Odds is getting along. I mean, actually, it looks awesome. Um, you're seeing a um, series of games. There's a lot of people who've been playing Leela at Queen Odds. And um, you're sort of seeing a series of games where before it was fairly even with, uh, you know, sort of 1,700, 1,800 ELO games. And now Leela's winning virtually every one. So it's really made a huge difference, uh, this net. And apparently, uh, the Rook Odds uh, net, uh, this one, which is already beating 2750, 2800 players, is getting a big upgrade as well. So, um, yeah, you know, um, I think there's just uh, more to come, you know, way more to come. I'm actually looking at this, I'm kind of torn as to whether, you know, Rook Odds is, uh, or Knight Odds is the bigger odds uh, somehow. It just seems that, you know, Leela just shrugs off the, uh, the Rook Odds with, uh, with very little difficulty there. I always find that Knight Odds uh, takes a bit more effort somehow. But anyway, there we are. Hope you're in, still enjoying this uh, this series. Um, planning to keep on going quite a bit with it. I mean, I think it's one of the most fascinating things that have uh, turned up in chess in the past couple of years. And uh, yeah, I think it says something fundamental about chess and uh, about uh, compensation, dynamism, um, accuracy, how to play, you know. Um, so uh, yeah, definitely think it's worth uh, concentrating on this. And uh, yeah, hoping that, um, you know, that uh, some more players pick up on it and uh, you know start seeing how amazing it is i would you know really recommend this as training for younger players you know uh, you know just um in terms of um training you know how to play accurately for long periods of time how to develop your pieces um um efficiently and how to deal with an opponent who's trying to play dynamically all the time and uh, is at your position all the time you know that's um and you know playing with a very high level but with the handicap of uh, of less material you know i think that'll really teach young players such a lot so i'd, I'd really uh, you know i'd really recommend it but okay there we are hope you're enjoying the videos and hope to see you soon